We've talked about one-dimensional motion. Some of the terms we've used are velocity, acceleration, displacement, and time. All of these variables will affect the motion of an object. Now I'm going to talk about the three main equations that we use when we describe one-dimensional motion. The kinematics equations that we talk about today only apply when acceleration is constant. There could be a time when acceleration changes. We won't consider that in this level of physics. Our first kinematics equation we can get from our definition of acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity over change in time. We've written it as Vf minus Vi equals Tf minus Ti. We can write it another way. So a shorter way to write it is V stands for final velocity. So you'll just need to learn that. And naught is something we use. That's the little subscript of a zero. That means initial. So V naught is initial velocity. And instead of writing final time on its initial time, we'll assume we always start initial time at zero, so we can just replace it with t. So if we take this equation, we can rearrange it. We multiply both sides by t, and then we get v by itself. This is our first kinematics equation. Our first kinematics equation says our final velocity equals our initial velocity plus our acceleration times time. Our second kinematics equation we can get by looking at a velocity time graph and remembering that displacement is the area under the graph. For a velocity time graph that starts at velocity v0 and goes to a final velocity traveling at a constant acceleration, which is a requirement for these equations, this is what the graph would look like. To get the area, we can break the graph into two parts. Triangle on the top and a rectangle on the bottom. The displacement is going to be the area under the graph. So displacement is our delta x. And that's going to equal this area, which is v naught times t plus this area, which is a triangle. The base is t, the height is v minus v naught, and it's going to be one half of that. We can see that v minus v naught from this equation, v minus v naught gives us a t, so we'll replace that. Next, we'll combine the two t's together into t squared. We'll replace delta x with x minus x naught and get x by itself on the left-hand side. This is our second kinematics equation. Our third kinematics equation comes from combining the first two. The first thing we're going to do is square both sides. We're going to pull out the 2 and the a from these last two terms. This becomes a half because this is 1, and a half times 2 gives us 1. And you can see that what's in here is the same as this right here. And this is the same as x minus x naught. This is our third kinematics equation. So now we have three kinematics equations. This is what we're going to use to solve many problems that have to do with one-dimensional motion. Depending on what you're given, you'll decide which equation is the best equation to use. Let's do three examples.
Let's say Fred goes for a bike ride. He starts from rest, accelerates at 3 meters per second squared, and travels for 5 seconds. What is his final velocity? To solve this problem, we have to choose which of these equations to use. We do that first by listing what we know. He goes for a bike ride. He starts from rest. V0 is 0 meters per second. He accelerates at 3 meters per second squared. A is 3 meters per second squared. He travels for 5 seconds. T is 5 seconds. What is his final velocity? We want to know V. Looking at these equations, which is the best one to use? Equations 2 and 3 require the use of position, which isn't given to us and isn't asked for. So they're not the best equations. We're going to choose equation 1. Plug in the values we know to find V. His final velocity is 15 meters per second. Now Fred goes for a bike ride again. He starts at his house, which we define as the position of zero meters. Unless you're given otherwise, you can usually assume x naught is zero. His initial velocity is one meter per second, and he accelerates at two meters per second squared for 10 seconds. What is his final position? We're going to do the same as we did with the last problem. Look at what we know and decide which equation is the best to use. He starts at x naught equals 0. His initial velocity is 1 meter per second. He accelerates at 2 meters per second squared for 10 seconds. We want to know final position. Which of these equations includes all of these variables, the four we know and the one we want to know? It's not going to be the first one because that one has final velocity, which we don't have and we don't need to know. It's not going to be the last one for the same reason. It includes final velocity. It's going to be equation, equation two. His final position will be 110 meters. Now Fred rides his bike at an initial speed of 1 meter per second. He travels 20 meters, accelerating at 2 meters per second squared. What is his final velocity? We're going to write out what we know to decide which equation to use. His initial velocity, and I drew a picture this time. We're going to start drawing pictures to show the motion and what's going on as we start. So we start at 1 meter per second. Our initial position, we said, he said he travels 20 meters. We can assume, since we weren't told otherwise, his initial position is at zero. And his final position must be at 20 meters. His acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. And we want to know his final velocity. Which equation includes all of these variables? The first one does not have position. The second one does not have final velocity. The third equation is the best equation. Now we still have to solve for v. This is v squared, so we need to take the square root of both sides. And at the end, his final velocity is 9 meters per second.